Welcome to Huntington Park, home of the Columbus Clippers. This is like the home of their minor league baseball team. Uh, there is a very historical reason that we're here. This is not very far from the Jesse Owens locations we were at. We're on Neal Avenue at the corner of Nationwide, near the Nationwide building. So I'm thinking Nationwide must have a big connection to this area. Maybe they uh, started here. Or, or it's just a freak occurrence that there's a Nationwide street. But... We've got Harold M. Cooper, from clubhouse manager to general manager. He was the patriarch of Columbus baseball. And then there's a bunch of plaques here. So Columbus's first professional baseball game was here in 1876. It says the famous Milfords were defeated by the Columbus Buckeyes 11 to zero. First major league ball club in Columbus as so those Buckeyes. Talks about the Columbus Reds in the Western League, the Negro Leagues in Columbus. Says uh, Satchel Paige played here. The Columbus Senators played at Neal Park and the Redbirds, the Jets and the Clippers. A nice place to see a baseball game. I love any time where you have a game where people can watch it without having to pay to get in, which I, I kind of think gives this extra dynamic energy, especially when it's like a sold out thing and there's people lined up all around. And behind this guy, Mr. Cooper, they've got uh, some of the different logos here. There's the logo for the Senators, I guess. And the Jets. Columbus Jets, the Columbus Clippers. You can see the clipper there. And then uh, looks like the Cleveland Indians logo there. So I guess maybe there was a Columbus Indians team at some point in time. I've made it to York Steakhouse. This is one of the places I found out about that I really want to go to. Uh, we tried to come here last night and they close at 8.30 on a Saturday, which uh, I don't think I'm going there tonight. So I'm here, it's early in the morning. They are not open. Uh, but I'm gonna walk around, see if I can look at the building. This used to be a chain. There used to be hundreds of York Steakhouses all across the country. And now we're down to one. Now this, I do not believe is the original location, um, but it's an old location. It's one of the oldest restaurants in Columbus now. Uh, it's a chain steakhouse. I would compare it to the Sizzler or Ponderosa, place like that. Uh, it was big in the 70s. They had a lot of them that were inside of, gro uh, not grocery stores, shopping malls. So like your big shopping mall in your area, you'd go to the mall, could eat at York Steakhouse. Let's go walk up and look at the place where they have sauteed sirloin tips. Family Price Dining, the original since 1966. York Steakhouse. It's interesting, there's a back door entrance and then another door here. The front is closed. Uh, you know, it looks like at some point maybe there was an entrance there, but there is not anymore. And you know, it says use front door, which is just a door in the back. There are no windows. This is a windowless restaurant. So there's no way to peek in and see what's going on. It's a lot of cars on the other side and there's people standing out there and the I believe the restaurant doesn't open for a couple hours, so I don't know what uh, what's going on. Yes, yeah, it says open daily at 11 o'clock. Family price dining. Columbus really is beautiful. Here's a look at this, uh, thinking like maybe the Ohio River. I wonder why there's seating over there. Did they do some kind of cool water shows or something but right over here across from the f and r lazarus company is this giant gavel this thing is huge now there's actually this uh barricade around it 
like a barrier. And it looks like it might be some kind of fountain, but I don't see any jets or anything. But there are signs that say you're under surveillance. I guess they don't want you to climb over this and get up there and I guess climb on the gavel. So I won't do that, but it is huge. Yeah, they're warning you that there will be no justice if you climb on the giant gavel, or maybe there will be nothing but justice. I don't know F and R Lazarus. I'm assuming it was an old department store. Well, we've got the directions on here, so we're standing northwest. Good morning, squirrel. We are on the campus of Ohio State. We saw this yesterday. They have uh, they have all the M's covered up. I was watching the Jesse Owens story in preparation of my Jesse Owens video. And that was a TV movie. It was made shortly after he died, told his whole life story. 1901, 1951, these benches here. Last of 1901, and then 1951 Memorial, but the M's are crossed out. Jesse Owens' story, in it you see him coming back to campus to get a doctorate. It's walking along this path. You can see this building in the background. I'll put it on the screen for you. And then he walks around to this way, and there's a statue over here that they had shown earlier in the movie when he was going to school here, and they show it again later when he gets his honorary doctorate, and we'll go over and take a look at the statue. So here's the statue of William Oxley Thompson, who's president of the university. Must have been wearing an M up there because they've covered it up, but there he is sternly looking out onto the campus. One of the subplots of the Jesse Owens story is that Jesse Owens came to this college and they wanted him here because of his athletic prowess, but he had so much trouble doing the work. He really was not a good student. And so he would study and study and it was so hard for him. And there's a scene where he's sitting on a bench that they had over here and he's trying his best to learn some subject and really blanking on it. And then he looks up at the statue and that stern face of the statue kind of intimidates him. So the end of the movie, the payoff is that he comes by the statue again and now he's got this honorary doctorate. He's done so much good that he smiles at the statue. And I'll put the picture right here. I want to do a full location tour on that Jesse Owen story, but I literally just finished it like a day before I came up here. So next time I'm in Columbus, uh, there are a lot of locations that they showed and I definitely want to try to match some of them up. But this one, pretty easy to find because just looked for statues on campus and that was one of them. They also show him, I think, going over here. I'll show you uh, what I'm talking about when I get up there. The last shot of the Jesse Owen story is Jesse coming down here to this area. And he sits down right in this area. And you see him actually shoot it from down a little lower. Then you kind of see him all alone on the campus. He would have been sitting right here actually. But you see it from this perspective. And he would have been sitting over there, camera up and down this way. And it would have been looking up at him as he sat all alone on the campus of the college he went to, that he went to twice, got an honorary doctorate at. And it's supposed to be a moment where the actor playing Jesse Owens is self-reflecting about uh, about his life as Jesse Owens, you know, this uh, remarkable man, says this area was conceived in 1933, and it looks like it was built in 1935, an outdoor performance area. And yeah, they show it at the end of that movie. In the movie, uh, this city fills in for Cleveland, 
fills in for Columbus, which it is, and I believe it fills in for Alabama in some parts. Uh, and then other scenes were shot in Los Angeles. There were a lot of great actors in this. Norman Fell, uh, Mr. Roper, Tom Bosley, Mr. Mr. Cunningham from Happy Days. By the way, speaking of Happy Days, if you enjoy this video, be like the fonts. Give it a thumbs up, and while you do, go, hey, I'd appreciate that. I also appreciated that in this movie, Vic Tabak played Abe Saperstein, the creator of the Harlem Globetrotters. Also in this movie, Tom Bosley plays Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> and uh, Ben Vereen's in the film. There's just a lot of great actors. Uh, I really enjoyed it, and it ends right there. There are food delivery robots rolling around here. Just pulling over there, I guess, getting ready to deliver breakfast to people. Ohio State University. Made it to a Wendy's. Wendy's started in Columbus, Ohio. I actually went to the location of the first Wendy's. I'll put it up on the screen right here, and I'll put another box over here you can click because I'm out of time on this one. Hope you come back tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Been a lot of fun in Columbus. Can't wait to get back home, though. See you tomorrow at 2 o'clock.